。七点三十一分了，是不是赶快开始啊？然后那个 ，Professor， 有 memo 有上线了吗？他有上线吗？他他今天是预录吧？我、哦、今天是预录、嗯、，OK。Good morning, everyone. Today is my honor to introduce Dr. Hirohito Umeno. Now he is the professor and chairman of otolaryngology and neck surgery of Kurumi University School of Medicine at Fukuoka, Japan. And today he will give us a talk of new techniques and findings in endolaryngeal microsurgeries. So let's uh, begin our meeting. Thank you very much for giving me the honorable opportunity to speak at this Dr. Shinpu Hall Retirement Educated Webinar. I am Hirohito Umeno from Kurumi University in Japan. I'd like to talk about new techniques and findings in endoranger microsurgeries. I have nothing to declare. Endoranger microsurgery has been performed with ranger expansion using a direct laryngoscope and a general anesthesia. Today, I'd like to talk about new techniques and findings in endoranger microsurgeries as follows. Resection of benign elevated lesions, laryngoplasty for anterior glottic web, laryngoplasty for laryngeal stenosis, surgery for vocal pod atrophy, scarring, and sulcus. First, I'd like to demonstrate the integration technique for a vocal pod prep. As phonosurgeons, we aim to preserve the vocal pod mucosal epithelium to prevent scar formation. Therefore, we often use the integration technique for benign elevated lesions of the vocal pod. This slide shows laryngeal edema of the vocal cord in a 42 years old female. A lateral vocal cord epithelium incision was made using surgical knife, and the sucking and squeezing technique was performed. Excessive epithelium was removed using scissors to cover the superficial layer of the lamina propria. In this case, the bilateral arytenoid mucosa shows severe edema. She always feels dyspnea and has snoring. The bilateral arytenoid mucosa was partially removed using the shield's razor. This video shows the laryngeal findings six months after surgery. Her vocal cord shape became normal and her pitch increased after surgery. Additionally, dyspnea and snoring disappeared post-surgery. Dr. Sato in a department reported the genesis of laryngeal edema of the vocal cord in 2023. Hypoxia induced severe factor 1 alpha and induced vascular endothelial growth factor in vocal cord with cell increased significantly in patients with laryngeal edema of the vocal cord. Transcription factor, he found alpha and induced VEG likely play roles in the pathogenesis of laryngeal edema. Increased vascular permeability with fragile vessel in angiogenesis is likely to be an etiology of laryngeal edema. Now, second, I'd like to talk laryngoplasty for antibiotic well. We often used and anti-adhesion silicone membrane. This is 36 years old female. 
a book on court adhesion appeared following episodes of vomiting at the diary. Initially, I incised the median of the book of court adhesion using scissors. Then, an 18 gauge disposable needle was inserted into the upper and lower point of the anterior punish. Both ends of 309 on suture were then passed through and the anti-adhesion silicone membrane was fixed. This video shows the removal of the anti-adhesion silicone membrane. You can see the granulation tissue at the anterior commissure. And on the left side, book of board. Because the silicone membrane is hard. The vocal cord mucosa appeared to be injured. So I once reported on silicone 2 placement therapy for patients with anterior gordic web in 2009. The silicone tube is soft and seems to be an ideal stent for patients with anterior gordic web. I will show you silicone 2 placement therapy for say, 67 years old male patients with anterior gordic web of unknown causes. After removal of anterogotic web, an 18 gauge disposable needle was inserted into the upper and the lower points of the anterior commission. Both end of 309 suture was passed through a zero size 10 mm length of silicon tube, which was then inserted into the upper and the lower holes of the needles to, sure, to secure the silicon tube at the anterior commission. Finally, both end of the 309 thread were sutures uh, to subcutaneous anterior portion of the thyroid cartilage. However, his posterior book of fold showed a deattachment. We need a proposal for a new linear stent. The placement of a soft silicone tube is desirable for the formation of the favorable anterior commission. Placement of a silicone tube alone, there is a possibility of the attachment of the posterior part of the vocal cord. Therefore, we designed a new range of stent with a silicone membrane behind the silicone tube. This picture shows Kurume University style anti adhesion silicone tube and membrane for the vocal cord. I'll show you a case of 71 years old females. Her chief complaint was hoarseness. She underwent vocal cord polypectomy about 30 years ago. Since then, her hoarseness has persisted. You can see antibiotic web formation and bridge like adhesion at the vocal cord membrane. First, the bridge like adhesion at the vocal cord membrane was removed using the scissors and the anterior glottic web was incised. Then a new laryngeal stent with the silicone membrane behind the silicone tube was fixed in place uh, like this. This video showed just the removal of a silicone membrane behind the silicone tube. Uh, you can see no granuloma, and you can see the almost normal anterior commissure shape. It, it. Some this video say. is finding your findings mm -hmm. three months after the removal of the two stents. A hostness from an after surgery. APQ, Jinda, APQ, Schumer, NHL, and VHN was improved after the surgery. This slide shows anterogotic web cases uh, with sent placement therapy during from 2000 to 2021. Six patients had treated using silicone tube placement therapy. One patient treated with silicone plate treatment. Two patients were treated with silicone tube plate placement therapy. I will show you voice function results who underwent stent placement therapy in patients with antibiotic well, especially PPQ, APQ, VHITM, and the VRQ improved after the stent placement therapy. From now on, I'd like to talk about rhinoplasty or rhinoplasty stenosis in patients with supraglottic stenosis and subglottic stenosis.
Endoscopic lens excision is a surgical technique reported by ECMO et al. in 2020 as effective in excising and preventing the stenosis in subglotic stenosis. Instead of circumferential excision, EWE is wedge-shaped resection. I will show you a case of a 67 years old female of subglotic stenosis. During endoscopic examination, the the circumferential stenosis of the laryngeal density. In addition, a false falseness was observed. This is surgical video of endoscopic wedge excision. Laryngeal expansion was performed using a velvet type laryngoscope. The laryngeal vesicle had a circumferential stenosis and the airway was only 3 mm wide open. The CO2 laser was used to define the extent of the resection. First, the region was resected from the 12 o'clock position. Next, 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 6 o'clock position was resected, leaving a total of four bridges. Additional excision were made as needed and removal vocal cord and the normal vocal cord were observed. The operation was completed. Uh, this is laryngoscopic findings three months after the surgery. And her cervical stenosis is appeared after the surgery. And her MCT, which I then we are aware, and acoustic analysis improved after the surgery. Then her tracheal stoma was closed. We believe that the entire laryngeal vestibule has been dilated due to scar contracture at each of the four resection sites. Next case is a 15 years old male supraglutic stenosis. He underwent a tracheostomy at the age of two when he had a group syndrome. When the tracheostomy was manually closed, this dyspnea was observed. This is his CT scan findings. There was a stenosis of 15 mm vertically and horizontally from the superior border of the private cartilage towards the trachea. The narrowest point uh, of the stenosis was 4 mm in under posterior diameter. I will show you his surgical video of endoscopic wedge excision. Dilingual expansion was performed using a direct rhinoscope. Stenosis was observed beneath the grotes. The stenotic region was excised from the 12 o'clock direction using a shoot laser. A bony region was identified under deep within the stenosis. It was removed as much as possible using a shoot laser and mucosal forceps. The stenotic region at the 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 6 o'clock position were excited, leaving a total of four bridges. This picture is laryngeal findings before and after. You can see the bony region of POD1. At the time of POD 150, you can see bone augmentation with scar formation at the anticommissure. The tracheal stoma is now closed. I will show you treatment method for laryngeal stenosis. Endoscopic balloon dilatation, shield excision, and the EWB have a low risk of voice impairment. On the other hand, Cryotracheal resection and laryngotracheal reconstruction have a high risk of voice impairment. However, endoscopic balloon dilatation and the CO2 radio excision have a low risk for risk stenosis rate. Conversely, cryotracheal resection, laryngotracheal reconstruction, and the EWE have a low risk of uh, risk stenosis. Therefore, EWE is a surgery with a 
low risk of voice impairment and a low risk of dyspnosis. Uh, surgery for vocal cord atrophy, scarring, and surface vocalis. Uh, regarding the surgical treatment of vocal cord atrophy, scarring, and surface vocalis, uh, there are various methods available as follows. I'd like to introduce a voice cord epsilon peeling with fat injection. Uh, uh, this case is a 28 years old male with vocal uh, scar and surface book, uh, surface book eyes. Uh, he has a husky voice and you can see quarter closure impairment. The mucosal wave and the amplitude of vocal vibration is small. I will show you a surgical video of vocal for the epithelial peeling with fat injection. So first, a diluted epinephrine was injected into the lamina proprio of the vocal cord. And an epithelium incision was made at the lateral side of surface vocalis. Additionally, the scar epithelium was peeled using forceps. And the epithelium is very hard. After peeling the epithelium, autologous fat was injected into the vocal muscle layer to spread the low surface of the vocal cord. It's in uh, there is a post operative range of findings. You can see a good mucosal wave and amplitude of the vocal cord. Additionally, the growth of closure failure has disappeared. I'll show you acoustic analysis before and after, especially jitter and PPQ improved uh, after the surgery. Next, uh, I'd like to show you a uh, FGF injection therapy. Treatment to improve the physical properties of the book of order included the following steps. The first injection and uh, implantation of material with good physical properties such as collagen, fat tissue, and fascia. The next, uh, altering the physical properties of the vocal cord using, using steroids and growth factors like basic FGF and HGF. The basic FGF increases their hyaluronic acid uh, from fibroblast and it decreases collagen product production from fibroblast. Uh, this slide shows protocol for vocal for the basic FGF injection. Inject 0.5 milliliter of uh, trophamine was injected into each viral space of vocal cord. Injection was given uh, once a week for a total of four injections. The first injection was given and during microsurgery. Uh, the second to fourth injection are made through the suprathyroid knot like this. I will show you change over time in aerodynamic examination. Aerodynamic findings, MPT and MPT improved significantly early after treatment. I will show you changes over time in acoustic analysis. APQ and APQ improved significantly after three months. Discussion of the result of this study. Milano reported that aerodynamic examination findings improved early after treatment, and the fluctuation parameters showed significant improvement after six months in 2012. Injection of basic FGF in 10 patients with vocal cord atrophy. MPT and MFR showed significant improvement early after treatment. Improvement in PPQ, APQ, and noise to harmonic ratio took a long time. Uh, our study concluded that the volume of the vocal cord increases early after treatment. 
it takes for the local port to attain the proper physical properties and for vocal cord vibration to improve. Pers uh, perspectives on the treatment of vocal cord scarring and atrophy. The Japan Rangers Association established a working group for diagnosis and treatment of vocal cord scarring to uh, 2021. Chairperson Dr. Shigeru Hirano, epidemiologic investigation of vocal cord scarring and clinical trials using HGF started in 2023. From now on, I'd like to talk about experimental treatment for skull formation. And Suehiro reported fibroblast growth factor injection therapy for scar vocal cord. Injection of basic FGF resulted in resolution of poorly accumulated collagen, restoration of hyaluronic acid, and improvement of uh, construction of the mucosal intrinsic layer was observed. Scaffolding in a department uh, reported that cell culture sheet transplantation after vocal mucosal excision showed a good score suppression of the vocal cord mucosa. However, otrogal cell culture sheet uh, preparation and clinical use is difficult. Therefore, Mihash in our department reported that effect of a fibrin glue drug delivery system for basic FGF was investigated using polyglucolic acid, PGA sheet, which can be used in clinical practice. I'd like to show a paper titled Endoscopic Sealing with Polyglucolic Acid Sheet for Restoration of Vocal Cord Mucosa in Dogs. And Dr. Mihash in the department reported nine male beagles were divided into three groups, including the control group. Control group dissection of a unilateral vocal cord alone, uh, and of course, three. PJ group. Following codectomy, the vocal cord defect was covered with a PGA sheet using fibrin glue and equals three. PGS with basic FGF glue, PGA sheet using fibrin glue containing basic fibroblast cross factor and equals three. I will show you preparation of vocal cord resection model and the method of applying the seed to resection surface. First, type the codectomy head down. PGA group fibrinogen solution was rubbed into the exigenal wound surface. PGA sheet was fixed with fibrin glue. PGA sheets soaked in thrombin solution were applied. PGA with basic FGA group thrombin uh, solution mixed with basic FGF. Evaluation of vocal cord form. Endoscopic range of findings was observed at one week, two weeks, one month, two months, six months after surgery. Larynx was removed six months after the surgery. Endoscopic range of findings from one week to six months after surgery are shown. In control group, granulation was observed. However, one month later, re-epsilization was completed. Therefore, tissue defect of the vocal cord can be seen two months and six months later. In the PGA and the PGA with basic HDF group, re-epsilization was completed two months later. No tissue defect of the vocal cord can be seen two months and six months later. I'd like to demonstrate how to evaluate vocal cord vibration using high-speed digital imaging and image analysis software window. The amplitude area of the heresy side and the receptive side of the vocal cord vibration calculated as shown. A 3M comparison was made between the healthy and the surgical sites. As a result of amplitude area of the vocal cord vibration, the surgical side versus the healthy side in the control group shows the 
the selected side was significantly smaller. However, in the PGA and the PGA with basic PGF groups, uh, there was no significant difference between the resected and the healthy side. In comparison between the three groups on the surgical side, the normalized mucosal amplitude of the surgical side was significantly larger in the PGA and the PGA with basic FGF groups compared with the control groups using the unpaired T-test. As a result of a historical evaluation, A shows the sickness ratio of the bilateral vocal cord because B shows uh, elastic fiber density with uh, EVG staining, and C shows the acidic polysaccharide density with uh, arsenic blue staining. A, B, and C comparison was made between each group using wind loop. Elastic fiber density and acid polysaccharide density were calculated divided B by A. A shows area of the damaged area with the line on the receptive side. B shows protein area of elastic fiber or acid polysaccharide on the receptive side. As a result of a historical evaluation, the thickness ratio of the mucosal layer was significantly larger in the PG and the PG with basic FG group. Uh, this Result includes that both the PGA group and the PGA with basic FGA group are effective in preventing vocal cord atrophy. The PGA with basic FGA group has the highest elastic fiber density, suggesting it is more effective than the PGA group in preventing scar formation. However, the density of acid polysaccharide didn't differ significantly among the three groups. I'd like to show you mechanism of scar suppression by the PGA sheet. Iska uh, reported that PGA sheet protects the other bottom after gastrointestinal resection from external stimuli. Mori reported that PGA sheet exhibit anti-inflammatory and granulation effect in post-esophageal ESD ulcers, promoting epithelialization and scar formation. However, the pathological effect of PGA sheet have not been evaluated. Therefore, we hypothesize that the coverage of PGA sheet reduce external stimuli and infections promotes good granulation and delays epithelialization, thereby supporting, thereby suppressing scar formation. Factors influencing the vibration of the vocal cord muscle. Hirano reported that the viscoelasticity of collagen, elastic fiber nectin, and hyaluronic acid, which constitutes extracellular matrices of the liner property mucosa of the vocal cord largely contribute to vocal cord mucosa vibration. In the PGA and PGA with basic FGA group, the thickness of the vocal cord increased, the density of elastic fiber increased, and the density of acid polysaccharide didn't change. This result indicated that the volume of the vocal cord was maintained and the viscoelasticity of the lamina propria was improved by increase in elastic fibers, resulting in good vocal cord vibration. This is conclusion. When applying a PG sheet to vocal cord exchange can prevent scar formation and tissue atrophy, resulting in improved vocal cord vibration. Two, the use of basic FGF increased elastic fibers but the efficacy of the filling glue drug delivery system was unclear. I'd like to show you a case of 73 years old male with T1B for the cancer patient who received a CO2 laser cordectomy. He underwent a type 3 cordectomy on his left vocal cord like this.
and a type to code to be on his right vocal port. Like this. Um, therefore, a PGA sheet was applied like this. There are examples of operative microscopic findings. You can see almost. As a part of the last vocal point. Today, I told the following. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you again for the great professor, Shepard Howe. Thanks, uh, Professor Uemo, for a comprehensive and excellent lecture. Is there any, any question from the audience? I think uh, Professor Umeno uh, gave us a very uh, good uh, um, talk and um, a very good, also very good demonstration, uh, his technique in uh, micro uh, surgery uh, with some uh, uh, recent advancement, uh, especially use the uh, PGA sheet and the uh, bulk adhesion and then the apply the uh, FDF. Uh, first, I think, uh, uh, Jerry, you might do a comment on uh, his technique, including the uh, how uh, we treat the uh, sulcus for caries. Will we do it? Will we really do uh, uh, epithelial peeling and uh, uh, hyaluronic acid uh, injection or uh, fat injection? And um, uh, you have any comments uh, on his uh, techniques? Yeah, I think the sulcus vocalis is very difficult in the in the laryngology. So now our our treatment uh, also apply the epithelial peeling and the HA injection or the FAG injection or the cellular thermis injection depends on the patient's condition. And because of the injection material uh, advanced, advanced, so I think <clears throat> the result will be better. And I think the HA is uh, it's not so e economic because the duration is not so is it, short. It's about six to nine months. But I think the fat or the acceleratum is, is a better treatment for some kind of patient. Yeah. And how about the uh, PTA shift? I think it's a good material for the anterior web or the for the scarring pre prevention, and it's it's a new new material for the laryngeal surgery. But but I don't have this kind of pe uh, appearance, so it's a uh, it's a amazing demonstration by the doctor Umeno. And uh, have you tried the uh, acetylene thermis uh, to? Uh... Use uh, a cellular thermos to apply on the uh, low surface of the uh, wall core to uh, prevent this scar formation. I used it for the vocal atrophy and <clears throat> vocal scarring patient. Yeah, but I think <clears throat> it's always the uh, it's a long way for the scarring treatment or the sulcus focalis because it's <clears throat> the result, the clinical result. Some is good, some is not so good, so it needs more time to apply new material for this kind of, for the scarring problem of the vocal fold. And the way they uh, treat the uh, uh, stenosis is, uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, I think it's, it's 
kind of uh, different from uh, you know what we treat the uh, subacortic stenosis or the subacortic stenosis. How yeah. how we treat that? <clears throat> yeah, our treatment is different from the Japan because uh, I learned the neurology from the UW. So usually we we use the radio excision, then we use the Jackson uh, Jackson press. No, uh, we use the Jackson rigid dilator or the balloon dilatation for the stenosis. Some patients, the stenosis rate is high, but, but uh, most of all, the result is good. So we, we do not, we did not do the the extensive excision like Dr. Umeno, but it depends on the surgeon and the patient's condition, yeah. Yeah, um, I think we probably need to uh, look into uh, his uh, technique and uh, review some of the, it seems to me it's a uh, radio uh, excision and uh, yeah. denuding the uh, surface and but leave some, uh, you know, uh, epithelium intact and then allow the epithelium to uh, grow over the uh, resected um, scar area. And um, so I guess uh, we need to uh, review uh, the techniques. I think the, I think the technique might be published uh, somewhere in the uh, literature, I think in the endoscope, I think. Yeah, and um, well, I think uh, Professor Umenos, uh, uh, he is the uh, number one surgeon in, uh, he is one of the best in the uh, uh, Japanese, Japanese laryngology. Same with the uh, our best friend, uh, uh, Professor Shigeru Hirano. I think they're like brothers. So, uh, and I think they all learn from uh, the great uh, Hirano, Hirano, the, the big name in uh, laryngology uh, in the world. Uh, Professor Hirano yeah. from uh, University of, of Kyoto. Yeah, and they, actually the Shigeru's father. So, uh, Anyway, it's a treasure. The Professor Hirano is a treasure for the uh, Japan, uh, you know, otolaryngology had an surgery and also for the whole world to learn. Yeah. Is there any other comments or uh, uh, questions from the uh, participants? Yeah, and the, if there isn't, I guess uh, some of the uh, international guests has been has left the uh, have left the uh, uh, webinar. So um, I think we could close the uh, section. And uh, uh, before we close the section, uh, Jerry, do you have any uh, comments? Uh, the last comment or, or take a message for everyone. Yeah, I think the new technique by Dr. Umeno give me some, um, give me a lot of surprise in this uh, talk. So maybe we can review some new techniques of Dr. Umeno. Thanks, Dr. Umeno. Yeah, and I think for the uh, Japanese, their technique is very, is usually very, very, very delicate. And then uh, it's their, uh, you know, their people's uh, characteristics. They are very delicate and very uh, beautiful and unique. And but uh, they only have a small uh, group of uh, people to you know to uh, to for the study. And uh, however, they uh, all their study uh, were very very uh, delicate. And uh, and certainly we could learn a lot from them. So uh, thank you, Professor Umano and. Uh, I know uh, Professor Umeno for many, many years and has been a very good friend. And actually, uh, when he first uh, visited me, uh, visit Taiwan, he actually uh, brought his son with him. And then his son, uh, see his dad, uh, you know, uh, spoke on the uh, podium and uh, and and then uh, decided to be a doctor to follow in his uh, his uh, his father, uh, Professor Umeno. And, uh, so uh, Professor Umeno shared uh, the story uh, with me uh, last year that uh, his son is in the uh, medical school and try to be a, a doctor like his father. So this is really something uh, father, son, and uh, 
you know, uh, you know, education and, uh, you know, uh, the, the real uh, uh, models, uh, the real models uh, for, uh, you know, the youngsters to uh, follow. So uh, I think there's a very good uh, example uh, for the uh, education. And uh, we are very happy that uh, many participants from uh, from uh, 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 other countries would also uh, join us for this uh, meeting. And uh, so uh, thank you for everyone and uh, have a good day. And uh, probably uh, for some others uh, from United States, uh, have a good night. So thank you and bye-bye. Okay, we close the uh, 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 now. Thank you.